Hey guys, Steven here with ProTech. So one of our patrons, Justin, has a brand new 365 and the 365 XL and invited me to join him down here on the range down in our steel bay in the, in the South Valley. Um, and so I took the opportunity with his permission to take his guns apart. And so I've got the brand new 365 Striker and the brand new 365 XL Striker. And one of you commented on the 8500 ground count video that the 365 XL Striker has a non-symmetrical tip. And you're correct. It does not have a, a uniform tip. It, ha it has an angled, uh, an angled surface that angles downward. So if this were the bottom of the gun and this were the barrel and we're shooting that way, the tip of the striker is like this. And that will aid in, I, I guess, that will aid in reducing the, uh, the, the big um, uh, uh, stink of striker drag or primer drag, depending upon how you want to uh, 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 define it. But the 365 XL, just like I said in the 8500 round video, does have, I'm sorry, the 365 does have a symmetrical tip. So the 365 XL, if you can see, I'll hold my hand up here and see if it'll focus. Mm -hmm. Justin, is it is it focusing? Yeah, yeah it looks good. You I, can see I can the, see it. The 365 XL striker there and the 365 striker there. And you can see it's it's set up such that it's in line with the hook so that it will taper this way um, upon upon insertion into the primer as it as it's indenting the primer. So those are the those are the two striker assemblies. I noticed a few other differences in the guns. We're not going to break that down down here on the range. I'll do that at a later date. But I just wanted to, to state that really quick. Now we're going to put the guns together and I'm just doing, going to do a quick shooting comparison and give you feedback from an instructor and, and shooter standpoint. Okay guys, so first we're going to shoot the P365. I got just two basic silhouettes here, steel, steel silhouettes. I'm going to do some center of mass hits and then I'm going to take some headshot hits and then I'm going to shoot the hostage uh, taker shots. Um, and uh, we're just going to kind of see how it does. I've got the 10 round and the 12 round mag, and then I've got two flush fit 12 round mags for the 365 XL. So here we go. Not bad. Now we'll do the XL. Let me grab a couple pieces of brass. Go ahead and pause that for a second. You're up. Okay, now we've got the XL. I've got two of the flush fit 12 round mags. And we're going to do the one on the right this time. This is about, about 10 yards. Not bad. And those grab a couple pieces of those brass, mm -hmm. and then we'll talk. Yeah. And those are your first rounds of the XL, weren't they? That's correct. That's correct. You're up. Okay, guys. So um, from a shooter slash instructor standpoint, uh, the recoil on the XL was a little bit more controllable than the recoil on the 365 uh, original. On, on the smaller uh, version. Now, you know, at the end of the day, we're probably talking between 5 and 15% difference in felt recoil, in my opinion. If you've got a real problem with controlling the 365, but you're, you're right there kind of on the borderline, it might be a good idea to pursue the XL because it's got a little bit more slide mass and, and a little bit smoother kinematics because of that. Um, 
Uh, now that being said, if you if you manage the recoil just fine on the 365, I would carry the 365 because it's a few ounces lighter and it's a little bit smaller package and it'll print less on your body. Because let's face it, you could carry this thing for your entire lifetime, hopefully. <laughs> you will hopefully carry this thing for your lifetime and never actually have to use it in a defensive gun use situation. Um, so I'll go ahead and stick with my small 365, but the XL is nice, gives me a tiny bit more controllability. The flat trigger versus the round trigger, meh. I mean, I didn't notice a performance dis difference. I've shot a lot of guns with flat triggers and a lot of guns with round triggers. And to be honest, it's, it, it, all, it all functions the same for me. Some people prefer the flat, some people prefer the round. Um, target performance-wise, we'll, we'll say they're about the same uh, for all intents and purposes. I was just doing combat accuracy at 10 yards, aim and center of mass, and uh, they all did they all did great. Now let's talk about the primer indent from the XL to the uh, from the standard to the XL. XL's over here, standard's over here. <clears throat> so I've got two two casings from the standard, and then two from the XL, and you can see. And you adjust yourself so that it'll focus however you need to. Yep, I got it. You can see the standard still has that uh, that drag aspect to it, much like you'll see on, on other micro-class pistols. Guys, this is nothing new. The 365 might have been a little bit more aggressive than some of the other ones, but this is not a new thing because these guns have to unlock rather quickly. Um, and then the XL... The XL, you can see the flat part on the striker. That's that's you know. So you've got your tip, and then you've got that tapered flat portion. And I don't know that that flat portion, that ramp, will help push the striker out of the dent that it makes in the primer. And maybe Sig had to do that to strengthen the tip of their of their striker on the XL. Or maybe it was to help further appease the masses, um, <clears throat> uh, you know, to, to reduce the appearance of the primer, you know, because this is that semi, it's not very consistent, it's semi-consistent striker drag on the, the original 365, and that ramp kind of does away with it. Now, at the end of the day, I don't know uh, which one is better. Uh, in terms of longevity, I probably will not buy a 365 and put 10,000 rounds on it like I'm approaching a uh, 365 XL and put 10,000 rounds on it like I'm approaching with the 365, um, because it's 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 just a small apple apple and a slightly bigger apple. Um, so I'll probably invest that time and effort into another popular gun, um, uh, but. You know, at first glance, this looks a little bit more professional from an appearance standpoint than than the original 365's primer indent. But they both go bang and they both function. Um, I'm a fan of symmetrical primer or, or striker tips. Um, the the non-symmetrical striker tip is concerning to me, um, but again only time will tell if they have issues in the field you know from customers like you and me who may buy this gun and put a lot of rounds on it so I would just keep my ear to the ground on the new 365 XL striker um, and the new 365 striker that does have a symmetrical tip and they move that that face right behind the tip back a little bit and they increase the radius there that was a good insurance policy um, if you go and watch our 8,500 round count review on the original 365, I've actually got a new 365 in that video, and I compare the strikers uh, in it and talk about them in a little bit more detail. But that's it in a nutshell. The two guns compared and the most talked about component uh, compared the strikers, and uh, that's my take on it, guys. Stay safe out there, and we'll see you next time.